Hey, I haven't watched the cartoon in a while, not since I was a little baby, but recently I booted up Pokemon Y and I'm doing like the special Ash Ketchum run. Yeah, that kid, where I play as all of his Pokemon and I can only use those Pokemon and it's a whole bunch of fun. But what I realised is, I'm a better Ash than Ash. The Pokemon cartoon's a mess, put me in coach, I'm ready! So as I go around Kalos as this terrifying clone of Ash with, let's face it, terrifying implications, I have all of these Pokemon. Whole bunch. Am I throwing them away? No. Am I giving them to random people I meet? No. Am I getting engaged in interesting stories around the region? Yes. <clears throat> the cartoon made a bunch of boo-boos. Problem number one, Ash himself. People don't dislike Ash because he's stupid, they dislike him because he never learns anything. Character development, maturity, his actual age never changes, and so there's little reason to actually care about the kid. Ultimately, the Pokemon cartoon is a cartoon. It's not an anime, it's a cartoon. It's predominantly one for kids, even today. The 2000s phenomenon of advertising, that's long over. Now it is just a little kiddie show on before Ben 10. I don't know, what's on these days? Season 1 of the old cartoon, it's on Netflix, I really recommend giving it a go. It's so insultingly harmless and simple that there isn't really even an ongoing story. Ash seems to reset his memory every generation or so, in a terrifying time loop where he truly may stay 10 forever. And that's the first thing that we're going to hypothetically change. Pokemon Origins proved that with a little bit of effort, animation and some bloodthirsty cockfighting, you can make one really good story out of Pokemon. It's a cool world. It's so fun to explore. What I hear many say is, uh, kill Ash, put in red. No. Guys, guys. <laughs> the silent killer badass you think he is? He literally doesn't talk because that's a little character he has. He's a non-talking playable character. He's basically an NPC. The most he's ever said is dot dot dot. Nah, he's not a main character. Stay in your cave, big boy, because we're gonna stick with Ash, but we're gonna fix him up. The ten-year-old Dim Bulb, who sets off into the world with a Pikachu who hates him, so he can be the very best, like no one ever was. The original cartoon's real issue was its episodic format, as if Ash has constant amnesia between episodes, badges and seasons, and you can have a stupid, lovable idiot as your main character. You just have to make sure he's lovable. To do this, we're going to capitalise on the most interesting thing the anime ever did. Let's have Ash lose. Yeah, when he got to the end of that Indigo League, he learned he wasn't the very best, and that hit him hard. All that wide-eyed optimism just came crashing down. So what does Ash do? He just tries again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Travelling region to region next to Brock and a generic interchangeable brunette. Failing every time. <sighs> it's not fun, it's not interesting to follow. You know what Ash needs? Ash needs a career change. Realising that he can't just be the best there ever was, Kanto matures the simple Ash catch him somewhat. Except this time, he's actually going to stay matured. Cheddar cheese. This is going to stick with him. So a wiser, calmer 12 year old Ash enters Johto, leaving his old team behind for a new start. Johto only has 100 new Pokemon, and this time, rather than be the very best at Pokemon battling, he's going to be the very best at something else. He's focused on a new goal, let's say, the Pokedex. So explore the land, searching far and wide, still fight some gyms, but sit the league out this time. But it's still an intense goal, and he is travelling everywhere, finding, locating, legendary beasts. Meeting every single one, almost, as he fails to register for legendary Suicune. Suicune? Su 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 Fuck knows. A legend that you can only see once in your lifetime. So close! But another goal, another region, failed. Not keeping this kid down, Hoenn, third generation. This time, Ash is introduced to the new world of Pokemon contests, and to Jirachi, and to Pokemon Heroes, and Destiny Deoxys. Again, Ash doesn't win. Taking us to the awkward matter of the movies. How many of these even exist now? Right, the first three films, right? Childhood makers. Well, they're actually feasible as motion pictures. They deserve movie status. 
Who gets them now? Uh, Lucario? Manaphy? Ho Hooper? Cool. Definitely gonna pop that in on Netflix. The mystical Hoopy of Hoopla. I don't even know what this thing is, honestly. Am I falling behind? Am I old? From Pokemon Forever onwards, we'll start either removing or integrating these world cataclysmic events into season finales, let's say. Like uh, Jirachi Wishmaker and Legend of Lucario, they're fantastic contained stories, but they're so small scale and open to expansion that I always wondered why they weren't just storylines from the cartoon. And whilst Ash doesn't, you know, he guessed it, win, he started to not even mind because of all of the fame, friends and badges he's collected. He's gaining one thing, experience. Now we're in Sinnoh, otherwise known as the controversial best generation. You know it. And Ash, being the curious 15 year old he is, has job prospects on the mind. And what does fourth generation bring? Oh yeah, Pokemon Ranger baby! Yeah, complete change in direction. Imagine Pokemon mixed with, I don't know, Power Rangers? Seeing the world from legendary beasts, environmental disasters, and the mysterious Team Galactic. Tell me you wouldn't watch that. Does Ash even go to Spear Pillar? Does he actually ever beat the real Team Rocket? I don't remember that happening. Yeah, so in the show, the reemergence of Team Rocket as they try to reform in Goldenrod Radio Tower, picking sides as Team Magma and Team Aqua endanger the world. All of that weird space-time distortion stuff. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too heavy, but it's crazy how many tense and iconic plot beats and set pieces the cartoon overlooks. Like, I think Ash meets N for like three episodes. Waste. Unova. Unova doesn't offer a lot for old job seeking Ash Ketchum to do, so, I don't know, suggestions are welcome, but one idea is that of early Pokemon rights activist Ash Ketchum. Yeah. Ash is that little bit older now, probably around 17 at this point. Old enough to maturely make decisions and interact with his environment. Team Plasma are the most interesting thing about the fifth generation, so why not make them the focus? Ash is an early adopter and recruit of Team Plasma, but he slowly realises that the organisation he's working for aren't all they say they are. The roster of travelling companions in my <coughs> hypothetical redux, they'd change more frequently. Even the seemingly unkillable Brock? Yeah, he's gone. Making Ash's friends looser, it sort of makes them seem more realistic, as they are all just teenage hitchhikers. And it keeps things fresh as characters split up, fight, cross paths, and meet each other again. Then enter Kalos. Kid's been travelling for a while. So an older, experienced Ash with a large collection of friends picked up from, I don't know, the last five years? He has all of them to choose from. Let's put Ash back on the battling scene. Storm those gyms, storm that league. Kalos is the region many have theorised actually being the series that Ash does become the champion. Finally, there's a lot of proof for it. Hell, with some new powerhouses, the emergence of Megastones and the rich library of Pokemon to select, this could just be the one. In this version of the story, Ash is less of a giver and more of a receiver. Hmm. Meaning that, among other things, he hasn't given away half of his team to randoms. So, with all the oldies to pick from? Charizard, Primeape, Muck, Lapras, Snorlax, Torko, Heracross, Pidgeot, Glalie, Skeptile, Kingler, Infinape, Staraptor, Gliscor, Torterra, Crocodile, Pikachu. He has a Greninja that can Mega Evolve. Dude, he's taking this one by storm for sure. And we're meeting all the old rivals. Oh, it's Gary. Oh, it's Cynthia. Oh, it's uh, mm, Paul. And he's beating them. And he's actually, oh my god, his childhood dream is coming true because he worked it and he put the effort in and he's gonna be the very best there ever was. Fun around, he loses. <laughs> I'm a bastard. Ash Ketchum, at his very best, putting 110% in, in his prime is not enough to be the very best. Yeah, I'm going there. Now, okay, this seems dark as hell. Now, Sam, why are you being such a sad sadist? Let him have the victory. No, 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 no. See, because this is important. I know that the hard work ethic is 
um, put effort in, you will get rewarded. But I think a really nice slow burn moral to teach kids is that it's fine. It's fine to not win. Being the very best is kind of like an insidious message I remember now. I wish I hadn't been taught that as kids. That's like being put in gifted and talented and told you're the smartest kid ever when you're 10 and then you realise, oh actually I'm just sort of kind of average. It's mean. It's mean. It's not how the world works. And I'm not being the old uncle who's like, toughening him up Jan. I'm cruel because the world's cruel. No, I think we can still have a nice ending with this. I think Ash Ketchum, after all of his travels, all of his achievements, and he has made lots of achievements, from meeting gods, to saving lives as a ranger, to becoming famous, to being a champion, almost, comes back home to Little Pallet Town. And he's surrounded by all his Pokemon, and uh, Professor Oak uh, uh, offers him an internship. Just helping around the lab. And uh, Ash says, yeah. Maybe one day he'll become a little Samuel Oak as well. And uh, yeah, that's how I'd handle the Pokemon series.